you were on target the whole time. <laughs> Ready to fade in music, ready to fade in four, ready to keep time on. Fade in music. Music, ready to fade in four. Fade in music. Time on, ready to keep time on, ready to keep one, ready to keep two. Dean Hall presents. Fade is off to five, ready to keep time on. Peach is off to five, ready to keep time on. Ready to keep key, ready to keep off to two. Peach with television. Welcome to Teachers Television. I'm Deanna Woolfolk. Take one, ready to take two. And I'm Brianna Martin. Today we begin a series of 10 minute programs on the various roles the media play in our lives. Take two. Television has a tremendous influence on our everyday lives. It is the most popular form of media, and recent studies show that the average American spends four hours a day in front of the set. The average child spends close to six hours. Television influences how we interact with each other and how we view the world. But is it really the best way to obtain our inf information? It's amazing that despite the preponderance of television viewing by the American public, less than 30% of our schools use TV for teaching. Many have theorized that the larger part of learning today takes place outside of school. Take three, ready to take one. Perhaps part of the reason that TV is not used is that schools have adapted new computer technologies. The internet is seen as a new device for conveying information and conditioning. Thought and opinion. Take one, ready to fade in music. This is not to say that television is irrelevant. Television is an important part of our lives. This series will reveal the ways that television can be a service to the learning process in an interview with a special guest. Today's program will give an orientation to media. Our first question must be, what forms of media influence our lives? Well, the answers are obvious if you think about what media we have daily contact with, like television as well as many other forms of media. At one time, television was an expensive luxury that took the place of the older forms of information gathering. In schools, it even could take place of the conventional teacher by conveying visual messages and stories in a stimulating way that a teacher or book could not. The best way to analyze the role of media in our lives is to think about the way we use it. Take one, ready to fly in box, ready to Each person has a different way of waking up to the morning's events. We first learn of our current events in different ways. One may decide to use Circa, an app that takes the most important news from different sources and sends its users condensed versions of the stories in short updates. Circa users can choose to follow news stories that editors have selected for the day or subscribe to stories that they find the most important. In addition to learning about other current events, throughout the day an individual can gather information in many other ways. For example, the use of Twitter in today's society is very high and is only increasing with ease. One can be updated every second of the day with the latest on the outside world on topics such as sports, fashion, and breaking news. Take one. Ready to cut in. one of the advantages of using television in the classroom is that students can view historic video images that will preserve the voice of great public figures or stories of monumental moments for years, decades, or perhaps centuries. Students can learn about the fall of the Berlin Wall on November 9, 1989. Historic footage of the day the citizens of East and West Germany were finally reunited can be viewed in the classroom to help students understand the celebratory atmosphere at the time. Television can give the student an otherwise unavailable view of a vital instructional experience. An obvious example of this is the televised operation in a medical or dental school, but has other applications at the primary and secondary levels as well. Television also can use a camera as a way to stimulate or control the way one feels. When the camera is far away, one feels distant and the viewer cannot help but want to look around the frame that surrounds the subject on camera.
by dialing in for a close-up, one can achieve a feeling of sadness and attention getting important. Television has a great ability to achieve subconscious feelings in a viewer that, uh, that cannot be achieved in other media. Finally, television can bring the stimulating outside world into the classroom for analysis and discussion. While it is true that films, website, and digital audio tapes uh, have the same potential, their technical limitations have restricted their use for this purpose. Television, as a result, has become a staple of our American daily lifestyle. Brianna, now do you think that um, teachers learn anything from the new media in today's classroom? I definitely think the teachers learn a lot from the new media use in classroom. I think that it definitely helps them relate to the students and it can help them really understand how they need to learn as some students are visual learners. Okay, Brianna, um, thank you. Um, and we'll see you back in the studio. Take three, ready to take one. Here in our studio today is Chris Davis, filmmaker, photographer, creative director. Christopher, it's great having you here today. Um, thank you for coming in. Um, I know that you live maybe not too far away, right? Mm -hmm, yeah, so it wasn't too, too bad of a commute. Yeah, well, th thank you for having me. Oh, great. Um, now, can you start off by telling us how exactly you got um, involved in the film industry? Well, what started me off in the film industry was uh, photography. And through... Uh, me studying at Bloomfield College, I uh, learned about more about filmmaking and uh, cinematography. That's what kind of led me off into the, uh, the industry. And now I currently work for um, companies such as uh, Kuji, Sneaker Beast, Etonic, Fubu, and Jewel Houses. And um, so I've been working in different projects with different celebrities, such as uh, Lil Boozy for uh, his uh, video shoot, uh, The Life That I Dreamed Of for his brand, Jewel House. And I, I helped assist him with that. So. Okay, that's great. Now, do you have any projects that you are most proud of? Uh, the most proud of project that um, that I'm proud of is uh, the documentary for my nonprofit organization called No More Rounds, and No More Rounds is a nonprofit uh, geared towards uh, educating the, the the community about uh, the gun violence that's happening around um, in society today. Just uh, just giving them like brief information and stuff like that, so they can be more active in their communities. Okay, great. Um, now, do you have um, any advice that you would give to budding um, filmmakers? Uh, the advice that I would give to some of the, the filmmakers that, um, that are just starting out and are currently doing their thing right now is just to be more proactive in your, uh, your, your, your medium because it, you have to treat it just like a relationship. You have to, it's like whatever you put into it, that's what you're going to get out of. So it doesn't matter what type of camera you have or what type of lighting you have, but just, just continue to be proactive and just connect with people. Great. Um, now, are you working on any current projects at this moment? A uh, current project that I'm working on um, is called the Foreign Exchange, Dolo in London. Mm -hmm. So uh, recently over the summer, I actually took a trip to London and actually, you know, filmed some of the locals. Uh, I got to know a few people, and uh, that's something that's, uh, that's coming up and I'm very excited about. Great. It sounds like a great experience. Um, we want to thank you so much for coming in today. Um, it is a nice day nicer day yeah. of the fall <laughs> days so thank you for coming in and we look forward to seeing the foreign exchange and come back whenever you feel free okay right. thank you thank you as a conclusion to today's program we should review the capabilities and limitations of the medium in a teaching context first what it cannot do it cannot provide face-to-face -face contact it cannot allow for extensive give and take in the application of abstract ideas and it cannot offer seminar instruction Television might be seen as quaint in our fast-paced world, but coupled with the internet, television has many advantages. Television can be used for teaching lectures and demonstrations, panel discussions, interviews, dramatizations, audio-visual devices, realia, and pupil participation with interactive systems. As we have shown today, television still has not realized its full potential from inception. TV is not a dinosaur from the past. Working with new technologies, Television has the opportunity to be a vibrant force in our educational environment. Next week, we will examine the various ways that we obtain news and how new technology affects the way we understand the news and events happening around us. Until then, this is Deanna Wolfolk. And I'm Rihanna Martin, wishing you a good day. <laughs> but it says Ben teach with television.
This program is produced by Seton Hall University and is solely responsible for the content.